as the peace negotiations broke down between the Anatolian renegade Piamaradu and the Hittite king Hattusili III, it was clear that another war between the two sides was inevitable. This time, Piamaradu was marked as the biggest threat to the stability of the Hittite Empire, and the great king of Hatti himself was personally in charge of the imperial army, heading for the crucial showdown. Wanax TV is a channel that walks you through the history of the Achaeans, from the early Greek Bronze Age settlements through their expansion, conflicts with the Minoan Crete, the Hittite Empire, the legendary Trojan War, and the great events of the Heroic Age, all the way through to the classical Greece, the Achaean League and the wars against the Roman Republic. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Following the failed peace negotiations, Piamaradu returned with his followers to Yalanda, an Anatolian city that served as a base of his operations. Hattusili III led the Hittite army in person and decided to make a stop in the city of Waliwanda and attempted to resolve the situations peacefully for the last time. The city of Yalanda used to be one of the main Arzawan centers before the Hittite conquest of the land and remained fiercely opposed to the Hatti and their dignitaries ever since. However, for Hattusili, it was necessary to bring it back under the Hittite control in order to re-establish stability on the western borders of the empire. The Hittite king sent a note to Piamaradu, informing the warlord that he was approaching the city with his army. If Piamaradu wished to obtain territory and eventually be recognized by the Hittites, he was to abandon the city and leave the nominal Hittite territory together with all of his soldiers and followers. The warlord refused and prepared his men for battle. As Hattusili approached the nearby territory, the two armies engaged. It is unknown whether or not Piamaradu personally led his army, but the battle was difficult for both sides, with an indecisive outcome. According to the Hittite sources, the terrain was rough and remote, and another battle soon followed under the similar circumstances. As the Hittites appeared to gain an upper hand, the great king Hattusili fell into an ambush of a new army contingent led by Piamaradu's brother, Lahurzi. Hattusili was now forced to dismount and fight on foot in what was another hard-fought battle that brought heavy losses to both sides and had no clear winner. It is unknown what was Lahurzi's role in the whole conflict, but the Hittite king clearly didn't expect him to be involved, as he later complained to the king of Achaea about these Lahurzi's actions. Either way, Lahurzi's army, together with his brother Piamaradu, put up another, third battle against the Hittites, but this time Hattusili managed to prevail and the rebel forces were finally forced to withdraw from the Yalanda territory. Hattusili therefore entered the city and ordered it to be destroyed as a punishment. The Hittite king decided not to further pursue Piamaradu, considering his heavy losses and not wanting to take any further risk. After setting up a small garrison in a fortress called Atria to watch over the area, Hattusili approached the territory of Miletus and sent his messengers to Piamaradu, calling for a meeting outside of the Achaean territory. 
Piyama Radu, now obviously enjoying support from his son-in-law and Miletus' ruler, Atpas, once again refused to meet the Hittite king. Hattushili, not wishing any direct confrontation with Miletus, an Achaean palace center, decided to send his complaints directly to the Achaean king on the Greek mainland. Soon after, the Achaean messengers were dispatched to meet the Hittite king, informing him that another message was sent to Atpas, ordering him to turn Piamaradu to the Hittites. As Hattuchili entered Miletus, he found no Piamaradu, only to learn that the warlord had just escaped by ship to one of the Aegean islands. By now, it was obvious that Piamaradu wouldn't have been able to do any of that if he wasn't receiving the Achaean support, at least coming from the rulers of Miletus. The Hittite king therefore met with Atpas and his brother, Avayanas listing charges against Piamaradu. The Achaean nobles, however, denied any involvement and promised Hattushili that they would report everything back to their king. Hattushili demanded hostages from Atpas in order to make sure that he keeps his promise, but this request was turned down and Hattushili reluctantly left the city and went back to the Hittite territory. The communication between Piamaradu and Hattushili would soon resume, as the outlaw warlord kept requesting the territory in Arzawa under threats of resuming military activities against the Hatti, if not from Miletus, then from the lands of Caria and Mycia, while his family and followers stood safe on the Aegean islands. It was at this time that Hattushili III composed the famous letter to the Achaean king, listing the accusations against Piamaradu and going through the recent events in great detail. The letter was incorrectly labeled the Tawagalawa letter by the scholars as the Achaean king's name was not mentioned, although it was him and not his brother Tawagalawas, the precise person Hattushili was complaining to. Hattushili repeatedly called his Achaean counterpart his brother, his peer and a great king, even confessing his past mistakes of being hostile to the Achaeans. This was probably done in desire to get the Achaean ruler to cooperate, but also reflected the position that the Achaeans held from the Hittite point of view, which listed the king of Achaea as one of the great kings equal to the king of Hatti, together with the kings of Egypt, Babylon and Assyria. Hattushili, therefore, suggested three options to his Achaean peer. One was to pursue Piamaradu to surrender to the Hittites and then eventually negotiate with them on his own. The second option was to stay in the Achaean territory but avoid engaging in any of the activities against the Hittites. And the third option in case he wanted to continue the attacks on the Hittite territory was to force Piamaradu to move from the Achaean territory to another country such as Mycia or Caria and engage in his activities from there and without the Achaean support. The exact Achaean response and their actions following this letter are not known, but it's apparent that Piamaradu continued with his attacks on the Hittite lands. This was evident by the prayer of Puduhapa, the Hittite queen and Hattushili's wife, who went to the coastal Hittite sanctuary and made offerings and prayer against Piamaradu. Either way, Piamaradu was at advanced age by this time and his activities posed nowhere near the threat he represented in his heyday. Hattushili III would pass away at around 1237 BCE, succeeded by his son Tuthalia IV, who soon started referring to Piamaradu in the past sense suggesting that the old warlord passed away as well around this time. 
The region of Western Anatolia would continue to be an area of perennial conflict, with both Achaeans and Hittites still involved, but the disruption caused by Piamaradu would leave deep scars in this region, an everlasting legacy of the Anatolian lord of war. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Estate Care, and Panayotis Yanopoulos for their continuous support. If you wish to become a member of the Patreon community, feel free to click the link in the video description. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.